urban life should at some time survey his resources to find out how much of a load he can really carry. If he has a very small uh, probability in these areas, he must live within it, or else he must find ways of increasing his abilities. To drift along on the assumption that whatever we are endowed with, this is our allotment, we can do nothing more to it, other people must accept us as we are, such attitudes, usually almost total indifference to the matter, will have very little constructive effect upon the degree of responsibility or pressure that we can naturally assume. There are in this world many persons, for example, who by natural tendency, natural inclination, are suitable to parents, suitable to parenthood. There are others who are not and will not be so suitable. They are incapable of the maturity of judgment necessary to maintain a successful home. When these persons attempt to do so, they overtax their allotment of integrated integrities. These people therefore fall apart. They cannot help it. And it is wrong to assume that this collapse is due to extraordinary weakness. It is not. It is rather due to the lack of organizational integration of resources. A person simply is not able to carry the responsibilities. A child growing up in a badly adjusted home is not going to have capacities to maintain a home of his own to the same degree that a child brought up in a well-integrated home will have these capacities. The individual of educational limitation, finding it ever more difficult to make a living at all, will not have the same ease in maintaining a household that will be experienced by the person who has an adequate education and is therefore capable of maintaining himself in an executive position. The person by nature physically healthy has a better chance of carrying responsibilities than one of delicate constitution. A person with a healthy, robust nervous system is more likely to remain optimistic to face the situations of life with a good hope than one who is naturally hypersensitive or shows strong neurotic tendencies. Thus the personality, its equipment, its development, the judgment and strength by which action are, and the thought are guided, these things determine the degree of pressure which we are going to suffer. The person who is adequate to his situations functions with less pressure. The individual who is struggling desperately to maintain a situation which may escape from him at any moment because of lack of his own resources, this person is under tremendous, terrifying pressure. Normally, man's nervous system is so constituted that it places a certain natural boundary upon pressure reflexes. The person who has only a certain degree of acceptances, who can only stand a certain amount of pressure, is usually by protected by nature. For if pressure far beyond this degree develops, the person is simply unaware of it. That which cannot be experienced within the common life of the individual, he may not react to at all. And if he does not react to it, no pressure results from it. But today, the levels of life which once protected the person have been badly broken up and confused. 
Up through the beginning, even the first decades of the present century, life was very largely stratified. Abilities caused individuals to belong to groups. In these groups, they were accepted because their abilities were about the same as the abilities of other members of the same group. Uh, those with moderate attainments expected to live moderately. Uh, those who had limited earning capacity did not expect to live luxuriously. The uh, code of life, the status of living, the cost of living, these conspired together to help the person uh, to live within a pattern of abilities. It is a pattern of abilities meant that uh, he must maintain an establishment on a limited budget. I remember very well when a person could rent a good five-room house on a good-sized lot without buildings for $15 a month. People lived in them and were quite happy about the whole thing. Today, even the same piece of property would rent from eight or ten times that amount. In those days, people worked hard, expected to. Therefore, the work being according to an expectancy did not produce tension, it produced fatigue. Today, we do not work to the full physical resources which we possess, but we are poorly adjusted for the most part in the things we are doing. Therefore, our endeavors produce tension and not fatigue. The average person is not physically tired, he is nervously exhausted, and discovers to his amazement that nervous fatigue is the most desperate kind. To, trying to estimate some of the, the patterns then, in a practical way, we come finally to the realization that society today, whether it be the great society, or the great socialized unit that some are dreaming of, or the great communized state that most are afraid of, regardless of what this pattern may be, the truth remains that society is not protecting the individual and has no intentions of protecting the individual. Society will provide the individual with certain situations, uh, certain conditions, Society can develop a sufficiently benign attitude so that it will prevent the individual from starving to death. It may bring to him socialized medicine. It may make more and more secure the bare necessities of his existence and even provide him with some luxuries. But society is not concerned essentially with the individual. It is concerned with a series of sociological platitudes to which the individual is variously related. Society is not interested in the individual for one definite reason, that no society as we know it today is geared to the potential of the normal person. No society has as its final uh, end and objective that the individual shall be protected against the pressures which will sicken or destroy him. Society today wishes to continue to produce these pressureful situations and then pro provide medicine at lower rates for those who are destroyed by the pressure. Society continues to make us sick and then gives us socialized medicine as a panacea. There is no intention to change the temples which we regard as necessary to this mysterious intangible thing called progress. Progress must be served, even though it may, must be served by the destruction of the individual. Progress produces means of destroying the individual. We must accept this. We must accept the bomb. We must accept all of the vast developments of destructive armament, simply because they are evidences of pressure and progress. Today, therefore, we cannot depend upon society 
providing a normal environment for the person. 